Hello and welcome back to the Alchemical Arts. Hope everybody is well out there and thanks for tuning in for another episode. Today's pigment that I'm going to be looking at, or at least starting a new series on, is looking at Mars pigments. So the Mars pigments were something that have sort of gone in and out of favour throughout maybe the last 100, 150 years or so that they've been around. And essentially um, the Mars pigments are synthetic iron oxide pigments, which is Essentially, so all of your ochre-based pigments that you find out there, whether it's the siennas and the umbers and the yellow ochres and golden ochres and stuff, they're all a variation of some sort of iron oxide with uh, different degrees of water molecules or hydroxide groups in and amongst them, which gives them the different colours from, you know, bright yellow, sort of goldeny tones, you know, earth tones, through to deep, deep browns and reds even. It's essentially all the colours of rust. So the Mars pigments are essentially taking some sort of iron compound. Uh, in today's example, we'll be working with iron sulphate. So essentially you're trying to create or synthesize an iron oxide. So taking yeah, your iron salt, like a sulfate, green vitriol is what it's called in its alchemical terms, and you're oxidizing it through a chemical precipitation, and you're then able to take your resulting iron oxide and heat it to remove some of the water from the bonded group that it's in, and you can then create different shades depending on how you heat it. For today's episode, we're just going to look... Um, at the simple basic um, synthesis of the pigment first of all just to make basically I'm aiming to get something that's equivalent to like a raw sienna color so sort of a, ye a yellow iron oxide color so it's not going to be as bright as a um, say golden or yellow ochre would be but it's going to be in that sort of deeper brown yellow um, ochre sort of color should be a fairly simple synthesis and hopefully then from whatever I produce from that I can in further episodes we'll play around with the heating and stuff like that because I really want to get those rich um, reds that you can get from the synthetic Mars colors which you know is iconic of the whole concept of why they're called Mars pigments which is not necessarily to do with the planet per se it's more to do with the Latin god the Roman god Mars his association with war and blood and blood being associated with iron and iron being the metal of Mars means that the Mars or the iron oxide pigments, you know, there's always been this strong relationship between the martial or Mars influence and iron. So it's a great sort of, you know, in alchemy terms, iron and Mars are always very heavily linked. You know, occasionally iron is also um, attributed to Saturn as well, but that's a little bit of a different relationship there. Yeah, today should be just a simple synthesis, but it's the start point of potentially some interesting exploration, because if I can figure out how to easily synthesize different shades of the Mars pigments, yeah, because of the ease of access of the materials and how cost-effective they are. It's a very simple and easy pigment to produce, or, well, in theory it should be. And it may be even something that people out there can try themselves, because most stuff you can get from the hardware store or even a gardening supply place, because iron sulfate is used in a lot of different applications. Anyway, let's move on to the synthesis, and we'll see how we go. So for this synthesis, everything is actually right in front of us. We only have two main ingredients. It's a very simple synthesis. And so in the little ceramic dish here, I have 40 grams of green vitriol, uh, to use its alchemical term, but it's ferrous sulfate, so it's an iron sulfate. So ferrous sulfate is a very easy to obtain um, salt so you can either get it from hardware stores gardening supply places or um, cloth dyeing um, places um, this one's actually from a clo cloth dyeing supply place that I also get my matter root from and then in the beaker here which I'm using a, a beaker that's already stained with iron because one of the problems with iron salts and iron compounds is they um, particularly iron oxides is they can stain glassware 
I could spend a long time trying to soak and clean this with different acids and things like that, but I've just set aside a beaker that I use for work, um, for iron work essentially. And in the bottom here, we have some soda or sodium carbonate, which you know is very much an easy to acquire thing from the supermarket as well, which would come under the name of washing soda. The recipe calls for 17 parts soda, 68 parts water, and 10 parts green vitriol. So I've done 40 grams here and 68 grams of soda here. So first things first, we're just going to add 250 mils of boiling water to the soda, put the stir plate on, and get that dissolved. We bring the soda water solution up to a high heat and slowly add the ferrous sulfate uh, in small quantities with continual stirring. So we're just going to spoon in our green vitriol and keep the stirring up until we've added all of the crystals and they've dissolved and we should have our iron hydroxide as a precipitate. should go through a number of interesting color transformations. In fact, the resulting, the resulting precipitate will actually be green, even though we're making a yellow pigment. It'll be upon contact to air that it will become yellow. I think the resulting precipitate will also be rather gelatinous, so that will be certainly interesting. So after settling for a few minutes, you can see here we've got this sort of greenish black sludge at the bottom, the water's cleared up, some of the residue around the top started to change color to the sort of brown and yellow that we'll get at the end. So all we'll do now is just carefully pour off the sodium sulfate solution that will have resulted. Making sure that we don't transfer any of our hard earned iron oxide and then all we're going to do is just add a little bit of cold water to sort of rinse it out a little bit and then we're going to filter it and that's where we'll get the color transformation beginning to happen through this washing and filtering stage so just some fresh water in there Again, we'll need to wait for it to settle down before tipping it off. So for the next step for filtering, just to make the process easy, all I've got is a glass dish here, like a Pyrex dish, and I've just put some Calico over the top here as the filter, and I didn't have a rubber band big enough, so I've just wrapped some tape around here. So it's all fairly simple setup, just a little bit of a depression here so that we can pour our mixture in. And as you can see, it's kind of a pretty sludgy, swampy sort of color at the moment. Nothing particularly special about it. As of yet, 
the liquid hasn't broken the surface tension of the calico cloth so it's not actually draining draining through yet so we can probably kick start that with just a little bit of encouragement all right I'm getting a little impatient um, for this to filter through this tension on the surface of the cloth is just too high so I'm just gonna gently lift this off here and what we're gonna do is just squeeze it through um, just because this is taking too long so careful that we don't lose any of our material or make a giant mess. Just gently squeezing, it's hard to see there. Trying not to get too much of our iron oxide or iron hydroxide as it would be at the moment lost so after I just jumped ahead a bit there and squeezed this out this is essentially what we have here is this big blob of sort of greenish browny sort of muck again still not much to look at but so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to grab a piece of um, ceramic uh, tile and I'm just going to spread this out on the tile and we will watch the color transformation begin. So here's the result from the first one which as you can see is a rather unimpressive sort of dark browny sort of color. It's pretty average really and I think what ended up happening was I think the contribution of the carbonate, the soda, the sodium carbonate in conjunction with the iron sulfate, either I didn't wash it enough or it just essentially turned to an iron oxide too quickly rather than an iron hydroxide. So we lost out on that hydroxide group um, in favor of an oxide group and it's that hydroxide group that really makes the iron actually yellow as opposed to brown um, if you think about the stages of rust you got yellows and reds and browns and blacks and stuff like that and all of that has to do with the amount of um, hydrogen oxides so hydroxides in the iron so I think I'm going to make a slight deviation and change up my strategy and we'll try this again. Here's the resulting pigment after we've um, dried and ground it from our second batch. Now it does look very very brown sort of like a almost like a burnt umber sort of look there but I think once we mix it with a little bit of binder which I'm just going to do some watercolor binder here and brush it out on some paper it should actually get more of a sort of sienna ochre sort of yellow ochre sort of style color it won't be that sort of bright golden ochre it will definitely be more on that sort of deeper more rusty dirt color as you would obviously expect from an iron oxide but this will be a way in which I'll be able to actually get an indication of what the color is like um, and whether this process that I went through is actually a useful process for making a Mars sort of pigment or whether I need to I don't know figure out a slightly better method I haven't quite 
there's not a huge amount of information on the literature in the literature here that I'm working with so because as you can see here it, it really does just look brown but let's get the molar onto it grind it up a bit finer As it starts to grind out, it certainly lightens in colour. Maybe just a tiny touch more binder. So after giving it a little bit more of a grind, adding a bit of water, it's definitely come back to sort of more of a goldeny, orangey, rust colour, which if I just brush some out on the paper here, you'll see actually makes quite a nice sort of yellowy, orangey, ochre colour, which, you know, when applied thickly, it's quite brown. And we take a little bit of water and we sort of sort of gently wash it out in a more dilute sort of manner, we definitely get more of a yellow colour. So all in all I think this is actually relatively successful um, exploration of the Mars colours because the Mars colours will never never quite give you the depth and the unique qualities that a genuine ochre will give you. They tend to be much more uniform in their colour, um, given the nature of a uh, chemical synthesis. You're going to get the same uniform particle size and all of that sort of stuff that you won't get in a genuine ochre. But, as a usable colour that sort of represents that well, it's it, chemically, it's the same chemical. It just doesn't have a lot of the impurities and the subtleties of structure and stuff like that from something that you would dig out of the ground. So, as a... As a synthetic option, um, or a synthesized option of an ochre, the Mars definitely presents a usable alternative. And... Basically, all I would do now, in terms of exploring the Mars things, is I'd like to go and take these and calcine them to different temperatures to see if I can get them to yield towards more reds and dark browns and even to a Mars black. But for today's purpose, just looking at making Mars yellow, I think we got there in the end with the synthesis, which is a good result. Um, it's a very simple synthesis. It's very easy to do. And if you have access to a local hardware store, then this is something you can easily do because iron sulfate and um, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide are very easy to come by and the synthesis is simple um, and yeah, you get a usable pigment out of it, which is cool. So once again, I'd like to thank everybody for watching and tuning in for another pigment journey. I think I'll go through some changes with the pigment videos going forward and I'm going to take a little bit more time with researching the next section of videos and maybe try and up my production values and stuff like that. Just because we're getting to the point where I've done a number of videos now and it's been coming along well, but let's, yeah, i just like to try and take it to the next step. And obviously things have been very busy with setting up the watercolour business as well, which I'll drop a video later this week about. Hope everybody is well out there, and remember to like, subscribe, and share, and all of that if you enjoy these videos. And thank you for watching.